Hi everybody, this presentation will cover basic nomenclature for ionic and covalent compounds. For ionic compounds, it's important that we be able to determine the oxidation number or the charge that uh, elements will form as they are ionized. Uh, cations, remember these are positively charged particles they, uh, which result from the loss of electrons. Sodium will form a positive one ion by losing one electron. Calcium will form a positive two charge ion by losing two electrons. Anions result in the gain of electrons, uh, therefore they will have negative charges. Chlorine atoms will gain one electron to stabilize them, so they will have a charge of minus one. Sulfide uh, ions have a minus two charge because sulfur atoms gain two electrons, uh, which stabilizes them by filling their S and P sublevels in the highest energy level. Let's take a quick second to review the charges for the different representative elements. Group 1A elements will all have positive 1 ions. Group 2A elements will form plus 2 ions. The boron family plus 3, carbon plus 4, nitrogen family plus, I'm sorry, plus or minus 4 for carbon, nitrogen minus 3, oxygen family minus 2, the halogens minus 1 charges when they ionize. You will find additional information on the back of your periodic table for some of the important uh, transition metals located in the D block of the periodic table. Uh, right at the top here we see fixed charged ions which include silver, cadmium, zinc, uh, the hydrogen ion and hydride ion uh, which can be plus one or minus one. Ionic compounds are the result of a cation being attracted to an anion. Uh, the Opposite charges cause electrostatic attraction, which will hold the two ions together. Uh, binary compounds are going to consist of two different elements. Sodium chloride and um, iron oxide are examples of binary compounds. Uh, please note, again, just two elements in the compound. Uh, whereas ternary compounds are going to contain three or more elements. Aluminum hydroxide is one example. Ammonium nitride is a different example of a ternary compound. All of these are examples of ionic compounds. The elements which form anions will have their names changed uh, in the nomenclature system that we're using in class. So a fluorine atom will change into a negative one ion and its name will change to be fluoride. Uh, similarly, we'll have chloride, bromide, iodide ions, uh, which all have a minus one charge. Minus two ions include oxide, sulfide, selenide. Uh, minus three charge ions would include nitride, phosphide, arsenide. Uh, carbon, if it forms a minus four, would be called carbide. For any ternary compound, uh, what you're going to find is that there are polyatomic ions incorporated in those compounds. Uh, please note that polyatomic ions have names which typically end in either eight, for example, perchlorate, or ite, like chlorite. Um, there are a few exceptions to this. We have the cyanide ion. Uh, we have hydroxide ion located right over here. We do also have the one positive ion included in this list, the ammonium ion. There's also a pattern. Uh, please note the change from perchlorate to chlorate to chlorite to hypochlorite. Uh, the change in the number of oxygens is going to be indicated by first the per before perchlorate, changing to just chlorate. We remove one of the oxygens. Chlorite now, the ite ending tells us it's one oxygen fewer still. And then hypochlorite tells us that we're removing still one more oxygen atom. Here is an example of a binary ionic compound. Aluminum oxide would have the chemical formula Al2O3. Uh, the aluminum cation has a plus three charge. The anion oxide has a minus two charge. Uh, so in order to find the ratio two to three, we need to find the common multiple of the charges, which is six. So again, Al is positive three. We have two of those. That gives us positive six. Oxide is minus two each. There are three of those, so that gives us a negative six charge. Uh, so again, we are balancing the charge by um, having the appropriate number of cations and anions to total zero charge. Here are some examples of binary compounds. Barium oxide, the barium is a plus two. Oxide is a minus two. Magnesium iodide, magnesium plus two. Iodide is minus one, so we have a one to two ratio. Uh, same thing will occur for strontium fluoride. Cesium fluoride is a one to one ratio because we have a plus one ion and a minus one ion. Sodium bromide is again a one to one ratio, as is potassium chloride. Please note the positive ion is always going to be written first. The negative ion is always written second. 
The crisscross rule is an easy way to determine the ratio of positive to negative ions. Uh, please note the aluminum positive 3 ion will pull that number 3 down and across. The minus 1 for chlorine will come, or just the 1 down and across, to get a ratio of 1 to 3. So we do have a chemical formula of AlCl3. Please note that if we have a compound where we would predict a 2 to 4 ratio, that ratio would need to be reduced to be 1 to 2. Um, or any other reducible ratios should always be reduced to the lowest whole number uh, ratio that you can reduce it to. Type 2 cations, these are examples of elements where there's more than one possible uh, charge when they form ions. For example, iron can form either a plus 3 or a plus 2 ion. Copper can form plus 2 or plus 1. There'll be additional information about this in upcoming slides. Uh, there are two different ways for showing this in the name of a compound. The stock system uses Roman numerals uh, to indicate the charge. The iron with a Roman numeral 3 indicates it's the positive 3 charge, iron 2 indicating positive 2. Uh, or the Latin system, the traditional system, uses the uh, Latin name ferrous for iron, or fer um, ferrum for iron, sorry. Uh, the ending will change to tell us which version of the iron ion is present. The ick ending is always going to be associated with the higher charged ion, the us ending associated with the lower charge ion. Again, more on this with a future slide. Students should be able to interpret chemical formulas in order to determine the number of atoms present in any particular compound. Pause this presentation and take a moment to do this for the following compounds listed on this slide. Okay, let's take a look at the solutions for this particular slide. There we go. We can see that this chemical formula tells us that there is one aluminum present uh, for the oxygen. Let's go ahead and change that. That should be three because the three uh, inside is going to apply to both the oxygen and the hydrogen. Um, here, nitrogens are going to be four. We have three here plus one additional one. Twelve is coming from three times four uh, for, for the ammonium ion being multiplied. Um, and we can see our other information looks to be accurate. The stock system uses Roman numerals to indicate the charge of uh, transition metals or other metals which have more than one possible oxidation state. This compound, copper 1 hydroxide, contains a copper plus 1 ion, so it will be found in a 1 to 1 ratio with hydroxide, and this one should not include any parentheses. If we do need to have more than one copy of a polyatomic ion, then we will use parentheses in the formula for the compound. Copper 2 is telling us the copper in this case has a positive 2 charge, which will be balanced by uh, two copies of the minus one hydroxide ion. Iron three oxide here indicates an iron with a plus three charge. Oxide has minus two, so we can imagine that crisscross rule being used to come up with the formula for this compound. Iron two oxide plus two iron minus two oxide. Um, iron three chloride plus three iron minus one chloride. Bring the numbers down and across. We get FeCl3 or we get FeCl2 for iron 2 chloride since the iron ion has a positive 2 charge. Again, the traditional Latin naming system is based on the Latin names for many elements. Uh, these would include ferrum for iron, plumbum for lead, stannum for tin, mercurium for mercury, cuprum for copper, aurum for gold is another example. I would ask that all GT Chem students memorize these five. Uh, now, the different endings which can be applied are going to be telling us the charge. Please note that the us ending is always telling us the smaller of the two possible charges. The ick ending tells us the higher of the two possible charges. So, uh, the name of the iron positive 2 ion would be ferrous. The name of the iron plus 3 ion would be ferric. Uh, the lead plus 2 would be called plumus. The lead plus 4 ion, plumic. Uh, tin plus 2 would be stannous. Tin plus 4, stannic. Mercury plus 1 would be mercurous. Mercury plus 2 would be mercuric. Uh, copper plus 1 would be cuprous. Copper plus 2 would be cupric. Here are some examples, additional examples using the Latin naming system. Please note ferrous sulfide here, the iron would have a plus 2 charge. In ferric sulfide, the iron would have a plus 3 charge. In stannous nitride, the uh, tin here would have a positive 2 charge. In stannic nitride, the tin would have a plus 4 charge. Nitride is minus 3 in both situations. Cuprous chloride could also be called copper 1 chloride, CuCl. Cupric chloride could also be called copper 2 chloride, CuCl2. This slide provides additional information for determining the um, 
formulas for chemical compounds using the traditional Latin naming system. Uh, so again, when we have ferrous sulfide, the us ending tells us that this is the plus two version of iron. Uh, so there we need a one-to-one -one ratio with sulfide in order to produce an electrically neutral compound. Ferric sulfide means that we have iron with a plus three charge. Sulfide will always be a minus two. So we can see that we need two copies of the plus three iron to get a total of positive six from the cations. We need three copies of the sulfide ion to get a minus six charge from the anions uh, to produce an electrically neutral compound. So we come up with Fe2S3 for ferric sulfide. Uh, the other example I've shown here is for stannic nitride, which is the tin positive four ion with the nitride minus three ion. Uh, so here we must have a ratio of SN3N4, um, and here's our reasoning. With, when we have one, two, three of the plus four tin ions, that gives us a total positive 12, and one, two, three, four copies of the minus three nitride ion will give us minus 12. Again, the addition of the two is going to give us a net charge of zero. All ionic compounds should have a net charge of zero. Covalent compounds consist of non-metallic elements bonded with non-metallic elements. Uh, we're also going to determine that the electronegativity difference between uh, the two elements is going to be um, in that range where it's less than two Pauling units. Uh, we will not use a prefix for the first element if there's only one of those. Uh, for all uh, secondary elements, we will need to use a prefix to indicate the number. Please note that the prefix is used for covalent compounds is located on the back of your periodic table in this location right here. Please don't confuse that with prefixes used for organic compounds, which will be discussed at a later time in this class. Please remember the example of both carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide to remember this rule that we do not need a prefix for the first element if there is only one of that particular element in a molecule. It sounds silly to say monocarbon monoxide or monocarbon dioxide, and we would never use mono as a prefix for the first element in a covalent uh, binary compound. We do need to use a prefix if the first element is going to be found in a number higher than one. Uh, in this case, diphosphorus indicates that there are two phosphorus atoms present in this molecule. Uh, now, for all of the second elements listed in binary covalent compounds, we always need to use a prefix to indicate how many of these are found in the molecule. Carbon monoxide. Mono means one, so that means that there's one carbon paired with one oxygen. Uh, please note that the O, the second O that would be found here, is typically dropped to give us monoxide instead of monooxide. Uh, carbon dioxide, the di, indicates that there are two oxygen atoms bonded to a central carbon atom in a, in a linear structure here. Diphosphorus pentaoxide, there are five copies of oxygen paired with two copies of phosphorus. Sometimes the name for this compound will be shown as diphosphorus pentaoxide rather than pentaoxide. And this is really a matter of personal preference. I would accept either way from my students. Uh, the prefixes used for covalent compounds are indicated here, um, and again they're available on the back of your copy of the periodic table. Let's get a head start on some of the assignments in the packet. Uh, in this location right here, we would form a compound with hydrogen and chloride ions. Uh, the name of this would be hydrogen chloride. The chemical formula for that compound would be HCl. For the compound that forms when calcium pairs with sulfide ions, uh, we would have Ca2S2 if we use the crisscross rule, but remember that this is a ratio that should be reduced, so the chemical formula for calcium sulfide would be CAS. Potassium, alkali metal, plus one charge, iodide, halogen, minus one charge, chemical formula for potassium iodide, Ki. Please note that nitrate and hypochlorite are examples of polyatomic ions which will be found on the back of your periodic table. Here's an example of a ternary compound. Be is beryllium. The SO4, you're going to find this on the back of your periodic table. This is a polyatomic ion. The name of this compound would be beryllium sulfate. Please make sure to indicate the charge of uh, ions like lead that have more than one possible oxidation state. 
For any covalent compound, no need to worry about any charges. Just use the prefixes to determine the number of the different elements. Tetraphosphate, trisulfide uh, would be P4S.